Welcome ladies, it's Amanda and I'm so excited you're here for another episode of the Feel Amazing Naked podcast and before we dive into this week's content, I want to just remind you that the doors for our Feel Amazing Naked Business Accelerator are about to close and we would love to have you join us. This program is a 10-month program for aspiring coaches, consultants, and specialists or corporate women ready to take their skill set into a private area. And together over the course of 10 months, I literally help you start making money with your purpose and finding the most amazing clients to serve and for you to really begin to create that dream life. So I give you the foundation of what building a business looks like from opening up an LLC to understanding funnels and all of this like private underground that sometimes language that comes with entrepreneurship. But most of all, I'm help, I'm here to help guide you through some of those mental barriers that come along in the journey, which is one of my most favorite things to do. So if you're wondering whether or not this program is a great fit for you, I would love to chat more. You can head on over to feelamazingnaked.com forward slash let's talk, all one word, L-E-T-S-T-A-L-K, and you and I can hop on the phone and I can share more of the details, which leads me into today's episode, because one of the questions I often will chat with people about is, how do I know amongst the sea of people out there if Amanda is the right guide or coach for me if this person is or this person is. So I was like, hmm, I think I'm just going to record an episode about this particular topic of how to choose the best coach or mentor mentor to guide you to success. And I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions because I'm on both ends of this. I have hired coaches and mentors, several, many of them over the years. Some have been amazing and some have not. And I'm going to share those experiences. And I've worked with amazing women that have hired me as their coach and mentor. And some of them, the majority of them, quite honestly, have been amazing. And also, I mean, I can't lie. I've had major coaching fails. Um, There's mistakes I've made. And also sometimes women just aren't ready to show up and do the work. And I've learned to do a lot of personal growth or personal mindset work on myself to understand that my clients choose their success. And I am here simply as a guide. And I do think that's an important part, which we'll talk about um, a little bit later. So first off is, I mean, truthfully, let's, you know me, I can't not call out everything, but we have the coaching industry has exploded and it's projected to be an even higher multi-billion dollar industry in the future. Why is that? A, I think that people see the value. And I think that um, when the traditional modalities of outside support kind of grew in the therapy world, which several episodes back, if you're just catching this for the first time, I recorded an episode about what's the difference between therapy and coaching. It's definitely worth a listen. And now from that, there are gaps, there are loopholes here, there are problems with that, um, with with the, the limitations, I guess, of therapy. And so coaching grew and people see the value, right, of what it could be. And so, so many people see the value that the struggle though is we have coaches that are totally pursuing um, their, their, um, their or growing their business out of, a strictly a monetary gain. I mean, there are definitely those out there. I've met them. And then there are coaches who are truly in the business of transformation and support. And so there are things today that I'm just going to talk about, like, how do you fish out? How do you like sift them out? And how do you figure out who is just looking to bring you in and make you a number? And also who is a great fit for you? So you feel that you're getting the support that you need. So how do you know if you need a coach? Now, this is my very biased opinion. I believe everybody could experience a really positive results from working with a coach. Um, and also, I think that the, the coach, though, is important to that, uh, that success. Um, because it's my belief that a coach is not there to tell you what to do. And there are a lot of those coaches. You've probably even had personal trainers like, do it this way, do it this way. 
And I believe that creates distrust in the client. And so my role, my goal as a client is to completely help them keep coming back to themselves to see that they are, they are the ones taking ownership for their results and experiences and ultimately can make the best decision for them. So, so here's some questions to ask yourself about uh, to see if coaching might be of benefit for you. So one question to ask yourself is, is there an area of my life that I'm struggling in and might be able to experience results faster with support, right? And often with this question, I, here's what I hear from women is there's a lot of shame because they're like, this is a blind spot. I have it so together in these other areas of my life. And yet this thing over here, whether it's building a business, I don't get it. My marriage is a struggle. My health is a struggle. My relationships are a struggle, right? Um, and they're like beating themselves up because they're like, I'm intelligent. I should be able to figure this shit out on my own. And they can't, right? Or another struggle, uh, another thought, a judgment, self-judgment is I'm weak if I get support. Or the third one is I just don't have the money to invest. And the truth is that, again, you know, my feelings about money. I talk about it all the time. That's just a story. And if you could meet your favorite celebrity tomorrow and spend the day with them for $4,000, you would find that money and figure that shit out. Um, but the point being is a coach is an opportunity for you to see your own thinking and why the why you are living in the reality that you are living in and if you've continued to try to do things on your own and you haven't experienced an actual long-term sustainable shift then it might be an amazing time to hire a coach and i guarantee though here's what i see almost all the time is, and i experienced this myself once i hired my first coach i was like whoa, why did I wait so long to do this? She taught me so much. She helped me see my power so much. And it's led to a succession of coaches uh, in the future. And that's not to say you need a coach full-time all the time. Um, I work with a coach and then I try to really take the learnings and apply. And then I'm like, okay, what area do I want to really grow in now? And then I take the learnings and apply. And so I'm constantly just getting a check on this. So what I think uh, is really helpful though, and when selecting a coach is I wanna offer you a, thing, a few things to think about, um, to ask yourself, to almost like just evaluate if this person is a great fit for you. Here's what I often have found when it comes to chatting with people is, maybe we follow them on social media or, um, you know, some, yeah, I guess social media would be the only place that this might happen is we see this facade of them on social media and we see their testimonials that they post, but we never really invest in who they are as a person and what they're speaking about. And so sometimes we end up almost falling in love with this persona instead of falling in love with the work they're actually going to tell us to do. And I think this is a really important part of this conversation is making sure you understand your big fat why around why you're reaching out for support and making sure you're ready to have the hard conversations that ensue from coaching so that you can actually create transformation. So here's a few things to ask yourself. One, does this, this is the most important part, does this person live the life that you desire to live now or in the future? And I'm going to repeat this again. Does this person live the life that you desire to live right now or in the future. Here is what I have seen many times. A client hires a coach because their perception of their success is really intriguing. And what she didn't pay, into, pay attention to were some of the finer details about how this person was running their life. And I think like stories are a great place in social media to even catch up on this. But what happened was she hired this coach and this coach was like in her own life, burning the candle at both ends, working 70 to 80 hour work weeks. And the coach fell into this extreme adrenal fatigue, was exhausted and overwhelmed. Well, said coach is teaching said client. And do you see how that works? That becomes a perpetual cycle. 
And so I think it's really important for you to evaluate, does this person live the life I desire to live now or in the future? Another great example that I've seen happen is that you hire someone that doesn't actually align with the life that you desire to live. So a great example of this is I, um, I spoke with a client that became my client and she worked with a woman um, who had no children and what a lot of her pain points were around this management of work-life balance. And so she said, you know, I just really seek to be led by somebody who gets the pain point of motherhood and overcoming this either or mindset. And so I think this is a really important point of, you know, there are struggle struggles that maybe a mother has or a woman in her 50s has or a 20 year old woman a woman that are different than what you may experience in your own life so it's really important to look at the lifestyle and the guide and make sure that they are running parallel to what you desire now or in the future which leads me to the next thing is what types of values and morals do they share with you you know, if they're posting on their social media often how they're spending all of their weekends, um, I don't, I, I don't know, traveling, and that's something that you really want to work towards. Cool, let's figure more out. Um, if they're showcasing that they're, you know, intoxicated a lot, like, is that something that you really care about? Um, if you, there's something that's super um, personal around belief systems that's important to you, are they showcasing that so that you know that your values and morals are congruent? Are they sharing pictures of their children often? And you're a mother that really wants to make sure that the family um, is a key milestone and a component of moving forward, right? These are the things that are really important so that you feel like you have a safe space and also empathy for somebody that's been there, done that for you and understands what it's like to grow a business, for instance, and be a mom, right? It's different when you've been running your business for 10 years and then you step into parenting, right? Those beginning days is uh, beginning days are a little bit easier when you're not worrying about like breastfeeding a baby in the middle of the night and you have a toddler running around. Next thing to ask yourself is, are they giving you a sneak peek into the ugly realities of real life? I think this is a really, I mean, they're all important. I feel redundant saying that, but if they're just giving us all this pretty sugar-coated rainbow butterfly and they're not saying it freaking sucks sometimes, then it's really just something to reevaluate because that means that perhaps they don't feel like they can be authentically them in this situation. And what will happen is you may not feel that you can be authentically you. I think this is overlooked, but to be able to, from, from my perspective, this is really important. I want to show up and put pictures when I have no makeup on and be in my Instagram stories uh, when I'm emotional and life is kind of shitty and I share that. Or when business sucks and my launch doesn't go like I wanted it to go. I want to be honest because I think that it's important for my clients that work with me to know that there is contrast. Nobody's got their crap figured out. And so if all you're getting is this mask of perfection, then what does that mean for what they're going to offer you as a coach as well? Thing, next thing to ask yourself is how do they communicate, right? How are you going to be coached? And does that line up with how you want to receive coaching? Is it inside of a group? Is it one-to-one? -one? Is it via Zoom? Is it in Voxer? Is it in person? Uh, what's their communication style? Do you know? Are they forward and uh, and are they direct, right? Because I, for me, I always say, I'm not here to be their friend. We could be friends after formal coaching is done. I am here because you want an outcome and I'm going to show you your thinking around that outcome. But some coaches are afraid to step into that and they side on this friendship part of being a coach, which actually does the client a disservice. And so I want to get my money's worth. I want results. And sometimes that means that coach is going to have to show me my thinking and I might get a little pissed off about it. And also it might be the exact thing I need to break through to my next level. So how do they communicate? And does that align with how you're receiving, how you're willing to receive coaching? And lastly, things to ask yourself, are there real life 
testimonials, right, uh, around the work that they've done. And here's a few things. You could be finding somebody that's just starting out new. And so you can just say, hey, like, I don't see any testimonials. Is there a, a client I can talk to? I have absolutely had clients who are like, can I talk to somebody? You know, this is a big investment, especially for one-to-one. -one. I'm like, absolutely, go have conversations with my people. They'll, they'll tell you. But look for testimonials, look for evidence that they worked with real life people. And also look to see if those real life people are, are being coached in the way that you want to. I wanna go back for a minute because I think I really forgot to drive a point home in the last pieces. There are so many amazing ways to be supported. We have programs and courses, right? We have group experiences with live coaching, and then there is one-to-one. -one. Be sure to understand when you are seeking support, what's that going to look like? Is it going to be just a standalone course where you go in at your own pace and you can maneuver through the content and receive? Is that enough for you? Like, is that okay? And be sure to understand that. Or is it that you want some guide, you know, some sort of direction, like our, um, programs are mostly there are there's content right and templates and materials that are so important and also we're there live coaching every single week and then there's this upper level which is just like one-to-one -one, all about you personalized right so there are many levels of coaching so just know what you're getting and ask for those specific details so you understand but really what I want to circle back to is I am so biased about this notion that coaching is so powerful, but I started with my first coach now five or six years ago. I've continued to invest in a coach every single year in some capacity, and every coach has taught me something different, and I've continued to up-level the investment, I will say. It started smaller and got larger and larger um, over the years, and I will continue to do that because the return on investment, the ROI, has paid dividends not to even the financial health of my business, but the wellness and the personal development as me as a mom, as me as a wife, as me as a friend, and I find that there is so much value in it. Um, no matter what kind of journey you're looking to go on. But most importantly is finding the right person for you is be patient, really watch them, listen to them, ask questions, interact with them. You know, how are they responding to people on social media or are they? This is always a really interesting one to me. Um, are they responding when they send you a message and what does that mean for you specifically? Because you can't err on too many questions to be asked, but I think to drive home the point is the most important of this conversation that I think is of value is, is the person that you're considering guiding you living the life that you desire to live now or in the future? And if that answer is yes, then that is a great way of segue, segueing toward their support because that means that they have the same values, morals, they are likely have taken the action that you will need to take to get to that, that thing that you most desire. In today's episode, I'm talking about how to choose the best coach or mentor to guide you to success. 